everyone, my name is Paul Vicheski and welcome to the Real Estate Classroom YouTube channel. It's just a place real estate professionals can get tools and tips to stay out of real estate jail. And hey, real quick before we get started, if you could click on that little red subscribe button and that little notification bell. Today's video, we're going to discuss bed bugs. Now, when we think of bed bugs, normally, if you're a real estate professional, you think that's a landlord problem or a property manager's problem. But honestly, I'm receiving more and more phone calls here at the school regarding buyers that have closed on a property a couple weeks ago. Now, all of a sudden, they discover they have bed bugs and accusations are flying. And then who's stuck in the middle? Well, it's the real estate professional that's stuck in the middle. So this video, my goal of this video is to help you navigate this process because this process is becoming more common and very complicated. So let's get right to it. What real estate professionals need to be aware of is bed bugs are very expensive and very difficult to get rid of. One in five households in America have a bed bug issue. One in five, that's 20% of the housing stock. The other problem is it's very expensive to treat. On average, it's $1,000 to $2,500 per treatment with an average treatment of 2.3 times. That means the first treatment typically doesn't work. So there has to be a retreatment at $1,000 to $2,500. And again, the cost of the treatment depends on how big the dwelling is. So real estate professionals have to understand that the time period between discovery and eradication is a lot longer than the typical type of inspections you're, you're used to dealing with uh, during a home inspection issue or a due diligence period. So keep that in mind and we're gonna discuss that a little bit later in this video on how you as a real estate professional can eradicate or navigate that process. One other thing to understand in states like Nebraska, previous confirmation of bed bugs is an adverse material fact. So. If your seller or the owner that you're working with has had bed bugs in the past, they need to disclose that on the seller property condition disclosure statement. The buyer does have a legal right to know just as if there was a previous termite infestation. So make sure that you uh, ask that question. Even though that question isn't specifically on the seller property condition disclosure form, it is a question I do think in today's market that listing agents do need to ask to ensure that that seller Properly, uh, properly identifies and discloses the infestation. Okay, so what can agents do to protect their buyer? Well, the best thing they can do is recommend that they get a bed bug inspection. Now, there's a couple of things I wanna point out uh, regarding the bed bug inspection. Number one is don't try to re recreate something that's already been created. Use the home inspection contingency process for the bed bug inspection. Listen, right now in, the, in most home contingency processes, uh, it's already built in that if they want a septic inspection or they want a, a, uh, a well inspection, that we just insert those inspections into that process. Do the same thing with the bed bugs. That way there, your buyer has the ability to get the inspection done and then the parameters are already established. So they'll have so many days to, to get it done and then there's so many days to respond to a a confirmation of bed bugs. They have so many days to negotiate the treatment plan. Uh, they have the ability to totally cancel the contract. So all of that is already outlined in the home inspection contingency process. And all we're doing is inserting that bed bug inspection into that process. Now, part two of this is not all bed bug inspections are the same. There's two essential types. There is the visual. This is when the inspector walks around the dwelling and they're looking for signs of bed bugs. The problem with this is bed bugs do not like to be found. They hide in every nook and cranny. That's why they're in the crevices and the creases of the mattress and the bed springs. We really can't see them until they've established a foothold and we wanna to get to them before that happens. The other way is uh, a dog. Beagles are the best. In fact, most of the bed bug inspector dogs are beagles. And they are highly trained and very sensitive to the smell of bed bugs. And they can actually identify if there's even just one bed bug in the dwelling. And all the inspector does is walk the beagle around and then the, be the beagle will identify any areas where there's potential infestation. And then at that point, the inspector can do a visual inspection as well. The cost is about the same. It's $150, $200, but it's the best inspection a buyer can have. 
All right, so the inspector calls you and says, we got bed bugs. So they've confirmed the presence of bed bugs. Now, what do you do? Well, this is why we wanted to put the bed bug inspection within the framework of the home inspection contingency process, because now your buyer has a couple of options. They can say, hey, we know there's bed bugs, but we're gonna move on anyways. We'll take care of it after closing. They can say, nah, I'm too much here, not comfortable with it. Um, we're gonna terminate the contract and move on. Or they may say, we still want the house and we want to negotiate a treatment plan uh, where the seller is going to pay for it. Now this folks is where you're going to earn your commission because this is like no other home inspection contingency removal you will ever deal with. And it is so important that you cross your T's and dot your I's. I cannot emphasize enough how important paying attention to details are on this because the, the risk of reoccurrence after closing is extremely high if all of these little items aren't uh, made, verified and made sure that they're done. So I've written them down here so I don't forget anything. Number one, we want to make sure that this isn't a do-it-yourself seller treatment plan. We want to write into that negotiation that it is the contractor that's going to be used to do the treatment is by mutual agreement. We want the buyer involved in the selection of the contractor. This is very important. Number two is, and we want to write this in as well, we want the seller to confirm in writing that they agree and they'll guarantee that they're going to do all the recommended preparatory work as given to them by the person doing the treatment. It is so important, and I want that in writing because the key to a successful treatment plan is the prep work. I've been there and done that with bed bugs, and I can tell you the most, uh, uh, prepping for the treatment itself is the most work, it's the hardest thing because they have to bag every, every bit of clothing that they have, um, sheets and everything, and they have to wash everything. It's a nightmare. And depending on the size of the house and the level of infestation, it can take several days just to get prepped for the treatment. It's not like, you know, cockroaches where you just go and you treat and then it's done. Because if they don't do the preparation work correctly, the chances of a successful treatment plan is next to none. The other thing is the day of the treatment, you need to have a conversation with that, uh, that contractor and say, when you get on site, you need to call me to verify that the prep work was done to your satisfaction. And if it's not, do not do the work. Because if they do the work, it's not going to be successful if the prep wasn't done. And I want them, I, that's why we're going to put it in writing, as I said, that they, the seller guarantees that they will comply with all the recommended preparatory work that the contractor gives them. Number three is, hey, if you can negotiate uh, the treatment of a vacant house, better yet. Now, I know that's probably not possible. However, it may be something that you think about. Now, in the case where it's not vacant, one treatment option is, is to have the property treated well, all the seller's belongings and everything is there, assuming they did the prep work right. And then when they move everything out, but before closing, then, and you have a vacant house, then it's a good idea to have the treatment done at that point as well. So then it's a vacant house and it's just a, a double whammy, if you will. That's typically the process that I recommend. All right, negotiate any potential possible subsequent uh, uh, treatment. So, we're talking about post-closing here. How is that going to look? Because remember, on average, it's 2.3 tries on treatment before it's successful. So we want to make sure the what if. What happens if we close? So this may include, um, it, it, you may require some funds be put into escrows, those type of things, or it's paid ahead. Uh, that's something you have to negotiate. The last part is, and, and this is really important, and that is make sure that you write in writing negotiate reinspection and what that looks like. So the, what happens is you have the property treated, but then it takes 10 to 14 days for the treatment to work. So we want our puppy, our dog to come through at the end of that period to make sure that the treatment plan, it was successful. And again, if it's not, then we have a contingency built in for subsequent treatments, but not having that reinspection plan is putting your buyer at substantial risk of a future, re future reoccurrence. And the last thing is, you have to prepare for this. It's been my experience where there's bed bug infestation that it's not gonna close on time. Given the amount of time that we have to uh, prepare for the treatment, the amount of time that the treatment needs to work, and then the amount of time to reinspect and those type of things, I think you need to expect that the property is not gonna close 
in accordance with the terms of the contract. So you need to have that discussion at the time of discovery and have the conversation with your buyer because the, if the buyer's time frame isn't, isn't working, then the best option may be just to cancel the contract. But it's very important that all these items are negotiated in that contingency removal and do not miss anything. I know I'm beating a dead horse here, but that's how important it is. All right, last but not least, we're almost done here. I know this has been a longer than usual video, but I really wanted to make sure that you fully understand how important this issue is. And there's so many areas and details that if you miss, it can really put you and your client in legal jeopardy. Just wanted to make sure you were well prepared for this topic. So last thing, while you are negotiating your treatment plan via the, the home inspection contingency removal or the bed bug inspection contingency removal, it's very important that you include some language in that written negotiation, and that is all terms shall survive closing. All terms shall survive closing, and I'll make sure that I put it on the screen here. Why that's important. In states like Nebraska, literally all the terms of the purchase agreement die at closing. What we're trying to do is prevent the seller from using that as a defense should post-closing your buyer call you and say, hey, listen, we got bed bugs again and it cost us $6,000 to eradicate them. It makes it easier for them to go after that seller for remedy because what we don't want is that seller to say, sorry, I'm not liable because all the terms of the purchase agreement died at closing. So all terms shall survive closing simply provides a mechanism for a legal mechanism for the buyer to go after the seller uh, should they need to for remedy. All right, that's well, that's all I got for this video. I highly appreciate you staying along for the entire course of this video. I know it was longer than usual, but it's a very important topic. Hey, do me a favor. Number one, you brokers out there, before you implement the all term shall survive closing, I have to recommend that you have your attorney review that before you implement it into a contract or an addendum. If you would, please don't forget, click that little subscribe button and that little notification bell. Give this video a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Either way, I don't care. It is all traffic for the channel. Share this with somebody that you might think will benefit. Comments, questions down below. I love comments and questions. Until next time, get out there and sell something.